So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, operations with functions, um, and we'll start with the uh, arithmetic operations. Now, the arithmetic operations are going to be your basic um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, uh, but now, of course, we're talking about functions. Um, so the first one we'll take a look at is going to be if we have function f plus g evaluated at x. Now, these operations uh, really display um, an order of operation uh, as much as anything. So the f plus g of x is going to be equivalent to f of x plus g of x. Um, subtraction will be very similar. So we'll go ahead and combine those. If you subtract two functions, then evaluate at x uh, is the same thing as, as evaluating individually and then subtracting the results. Um, the third operation for multiplication would be if we have f times g of x, which is f of x times g of x. And the fourth one, division, would be uh, probably what you expect to see, f of x divided by g of x. Um, there is an additional condition here, though, that we do have to remember. Um, the g of x, in this case, cannot be zero because we can't divide by zero. So uh, those are the uh, arithmetic operations. Again, they're really more order of operations uh, and notational at this point. Um, but we'll take a look at the first example here um, in two different ways. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to see um, what, we, we, what we're uh, describing here in the, uh, with the notation. So the first example you're looking at, um, you've got a linear function, uh, f, and a uh, quadratic function, g. We want f, or excuse me, we want g minus f at negative 6. Um, so the first method that we'll take is where we take function g and subtract from it function f. Um, so function g would be x squared minus x plus 1, and we're going to subtract x minus 3. So when we clean this up a little bit, we'll distribute our negative, and we end up with x squared minus 2x plus 4. Um, now, we would take this and evaluate at negative 6. So if I take x equal negative 6, uh, when we do this, we end up with 52. Okay, so that's method 1. Uh, method 2 now, this is where we're going to now take g of negative 6 minus f of negative 6. <clears throat> so g of negative 6 says go find function g every place you see an x put a negative 6 so negative 6 squared minus a negative 6 plus a 1 g of negative 6 ends up being a positive 43 f of negative 6 says go find function f every place you see an x put a negative 6 so when we take negative 6 minus 3 we end up with a negative 9 now remember, we're taking this guy minus this guy, so 43 minus a minus 9 gives us our positive 52, uh, just like we came up with using the earlier method. So hopefully that last example uh, was more of a review for you uh, than anything. Um, but we are going to take this now, and we're going to expand upon it a little bit. Um, the way the previous uh, example uh, was, was presented is we were dealing with uh, continuous functions, um, meaning they're an uncountable uh, number of points. Now we're going to talk about a similar problem, um, but where we're presented functions um, as sets of ordered pairs, uh, which you could also call discrete or countable sets. So in this example, uh, before we get started, I want to backtrack a little bit and, and look at that previous example and talk a little bit more about uh, what we did um, in, in much greater detail. So what we started with um, was an x value given of negative 6. And you can see the negative 6 was plugged into both of those. Um, so the way we're going to view this is that we're searching for a common x value. So uh, for the discrete functions f and g that you're looking at here in black, we're going to be looking for common x values. Um, and in the previous example, we were told to subtract. And what we ended up subtracting 
or the y coordinates. So we're going to search for common x values and we're going to operate on y. And when we say operate, we mean subtraction in the last example, uh, and in this example, addition, and in this example, division. So common x's and operate on y's. So if I come up here and I look at example A, uh, function f plus g, these two functions I'm going to look for common x values. So you can see that the x coordinate of 2 uh, it occurs in both f and g. And so as a point, we would have an x coordinate of 2, and we would then operate on the y's. So negative 3 plus 6. And then we'll continue searching to see if there are any more common x values. Looks like there's a 3 and a 3. So our second point would have an x-coordinate of 3, and we would operate on y. So our final answer here uh, for part A would be the point 2, 3, and the point 3, 1. And in this next example, our next part, uh, we're now going to divide. So as you can probably tell, the x coordinates will still be the same because we would be looking for those common x's again. Um, but we have to be a little bit careful. Um, division is not commutative, um, so we would need to make sure we, we divide in the correct order. So you can see we would take g divided by f, so we would take the 6 divided by negative 3. And then for the second ordered pair, x would be 3. And then for the y's, we would have 1 divided by 0. Well, you can't divide by 0, so we have to throw that point out. And our only point for this uh, division of, of functions would be the point 2, negative 2. All right, in this next example, uh, we'll take it a little bit further uh, yet again. Uh, here we're given more continuous functions. Uh, we're told to uh, multiply these together, um, not necessarily at a, at a specific point, uh, but just to multiply them together. So I'll take function f, and I'll multiply it with function g. Remember, this says the same thing as f of x times g of x. So if you prefer, if you prefer to look at it like that, that's the same thing. So once I take now the two functions and I multiply them together, it's actually a pretty simple problem. Um, that's the resulting function. Now, <clears throat> what we want to talk about um, in detail here is the actual domain. So if you think back to the domain uh, of what we did in the last problem, those were the common x's. So we need the, the interval now in this case um, of x values um, that are common to both, uh, which in math we refer to as an intersection. So independently, the domain of f would be 0 to positive infinity. The domain of g would be everything except 2, because again, we can't have our 2 in our denominator. So if I look uh, and one of the things that I always recommend is, is if you're trying to find the intersection, to go ahead and draw this out one directly below the other, uh, and then it's easy to see. Um, so 0 to infinity would be here. Everything but 2 would look like this. And if we're looking for the intersection or we're looking for the overlap, then you can see that from 0 to 2, and then 2 to infinity would be the common x values. So the domain of our resulting function would end up being 0 to 2 union 2 to positive infinity.